In today's video I will try using a cheap laser galvo to build a vector display. As always I failed, learned oh, no. and ultimately turned the project around with amazing results. This video has been sponsored and approved by Brilliant. Quite some people liked the fake CRT I made last time. Although it already looked nice, I wanted to improve the speed. An obvious way was to replace the stepper galvo by one of these cheap off-the-shelf galvanometers from AliExpress. Without even checking the specs, I opted for the cheaper option without the power supply, which turned out to be a mistake. When it arrived I realized it requires plus minus 15 volts to run it and also the signal input seems to be plus minus 10 or 5 volts. The documentation wasn't clear here. I hooked it up to my bench power supply and started to test it with a 0 to 3.3 volt signal from the ESP32 DAX. It's moving! Out of the box! <laughs> that was already a first success and it was fast. I changed the potty here, we get a wider overscan here. Next I wanted to try some OSCE music. That uses the two audio channels as X and Y coordinates to draw some graphics while resembling actual music at the same time. I printed a new bracket to hold the laser. Alright, laser goes here, the galvo part goes here, and this mirror aims there and then we have pew 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 pew. This is centered but oh shoot. We need to move over there. Printed it again and started working on a simple analog preamp. Boop, 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 boop. Output. Bigger. Bigger. Uh. Big. Yes. <laughs> this is the amplification factor. You can see that's plus minus 15 volts here. Nice. The Galvo was next. However, there was a slight issue. If I would connect an audio cable with a different ground level, but both actual grounds are connected through mains, this would blow up. I don't have an insulating transformer, so I wanted to drive it from a 6 cell LiPo, just by tapping into the different voltage levels at the balancing connector. In theory, a good idea. Unless you flip some cables in the process. Oh sh no! <gasps> Oh now it's fried. Reversing the voltage wasn't very healthy to the electrolytic caps, but also people on the stream spotted a crater on the minus 9 volts regulator, where some magic smoke escaped as well. I replaced the caps with similar values which only fit dangling around like that, and replaced the regulator with a TO package 1, just because it was one tenth of the price while being shipped fast. This time I mark the polarities on the cables and connectors to be sure. Don't do a mistake. <laughs> Alright. This doesn't have any power. But my hopes were crushed. So right side might be damaged. Shoot. There was no way around replacing the shift registers or the drivers. So I ordered more parts and replaced the op amps, the drivers and the second 9 volts regulator. Ooh, nice. And see what happens. This one is now 34. This one is 33. Looks alright to me actually. Now we need to check if we can get the signal going. But still no success. This project was cursed and all my efforts trying to fix my screw up failed. I had to admit the defeat and take another delay of 3 weeks ordering a completely new Galvo. But all the time spent debugging and looking into the circuit wasn't wasted. As always there is a lesson to learn. Looking into the details we satisfied our curiosity how this whole feedback loop is working. It's measured with some light detectors and an infrared diode that's blocked a little bit. And I even stumbled into a little audio side project. The Galvos were driven by D2030A AB class amplifiers. While looking for replacements we found out that these are basic audio amplifiers. These were unobtainable here but I found the TDA2050 which is actually same package, same pins and more commonly used. We rebuilt the reference circuit it's getting louder. and found out that the drivers need serious cooling. What is heating up so much? Oh! Stop! Especially when you forget this capacitor. 
After some tweaking, it worked amazingly, even with our hardware mod tracker. The last electronics project for this year. Uh, let's turn it on. Ah! <laughs> but my real goal was to find out if we can drive the Galvo without a feedback loop. <laughs> It somewhat works, but it would require a lot of tuning to balance all the physical attributes. We, we made a telegraph, a laser telegraph. As it is, the mirror was only maxing out to one or the other direction. That isn't healthy at all, is what I found out later. I need to turn it off. Ah, 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 ah. Turn it off, turn it off. This will melt my Galvo. A few weeks later the new Galvo arrived. This time I wasn't too cheap to get the power supply with it. Although it is a bit scary since we are dealing with exposed mains power. Do this only if you are an expert. Yeah, and there is the new Galvo, but we can just try using the old one. I also got an RGB laser module. This I didn't use so far, as the power will certainly scar your retina. And I don't trust myself enough to handle this safely. So please be cautious. Anyways, I really wanted to test the Galvo music. As I seem to have killed my preamp that I soldered in the meantime, I decided to solder a new one. Oh yeah. This one could even be directly powered from the same power supply attached to the second JST connector. You can put it either this way around or this way around and then see what happens. Wait, wrong. Woo! Almost, almost destroyed it. Okay, mirrors are moving. I can hear the mirror. After all this hassle, we finally were at the point from a month ago. Driving the Galvo at a high amplification to cover a greater area was heating the controller seriously. Ah, okay, it's hot to the touch. Yeah, th these are glowing. Uh, 69 degrees. I like passive cooling, but with this heatsink, all dreams to confine it in an old mini TV case were lost. Aussie music is nice, but I wanted to drive it from an ESP32 directly. There still was one issue though that Sonic pointed out to me on the livestream. The digital to analog converters from the ESP are only outputting 0 to 3.3 volts. We could send it to an op amp with the DC blocking capacitor. This would chip the signal to plus minus 1.6 volts. But the big disadvantage is that you can't draw squares anymore, since a constant offset will slowly be removed as the cap charges. Chad came up with some nice amplifier circuits that are working without this coupling cap. And somehow I liked Roter Fruchtzweig's cursed amp the most. It wasn't intuitive to me, but it used the least parts, so I was sold. I soldered the circuit on a perf board with headers for the ESP32 mini kit. To get the 5 volts from the ESP board from the incoming plus 12, I used the cool part. It's a drop-in replacement for the LM7805 regulator, but it's actually a switching power supply. This is way more efficient and doesn't even need cooling here. Okay, now I need to be careful to do the right thing here. This is the power, okay? Let's plug it in and see, see if it explodes. Alright! Okay, it turns on. You can see the smiley already there. And this is the shift. What? It works? There's your smiley. First tests were promising, but I needed to add the MOSFET to switch the laser. Laser, we can just plug it in. And IO4 is basically... Ah! IO4 is controlling it. This is amazing! Let's try to center it. Here we go. That worked. But since this is cursed, only for a couple of minutes, then the X-direction uh -oh. Galvo stopped working. I was really worried that the driver is damaged again. If we use the old one that we took apart already, we might be good here. But swapping to the newly shipped Galvo that we had spare, it turned out the old Galvo was physically yeah. damaged. Both are moving. It seemed driving it at these wide angles, the Galvos would die at some point. If, if it has like... 
No, 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 don't die, don't die, don't die again. To solve that issue, I thought of just putting a wide angle lens in front of the output. Have this uh, lens that you put on your smartphone, 180 degrees fish eye. And if I put this in front of the mirrors, we can get a wider angle here. This might work, but it also seemed that we need a bigger case for all this chunky stuff. Although I like that mini TV style, I went for a practical and modular approach this time. What is with this? <laughs> oh, it's biting. Ah! Nice, all right. This is also the first time I used those insets for 3mm bolts and I must admit, I like them. I assembled everything and I was ready for some tests. <laughs> oh no. The lens wasn't close enough to the Galvo, so I removed it and there were even more issues that required a temporary solution. <laughs> Only to kill another Galvo at a higher deflection again. Uh oh, it happened again. That was the last proof that I needed that they are quite sensitive. This, this gets really warm. I think it's broken again. It's always a step forward, two steps back. I Frankensteined a new Galvo from the two broken ones and needed to drive it at lower angles, actually using the lens to get a bigger image. At this point I just wanted to be done. And you know you get sloppy when rushing stuff. There was no way around the blood sacrifice to the poor safety gods to break the curse. Oh. I stepped myself, oh no. Okay, this seems to be better oh my god and there you go this looks awesome oh. it works and even looks great to a satisfactory extent this is chris's also known as atomic 14 port of asteroids oh. running on the esp32 it only needed a few changes to work with the internal dax and i also added a wii oh. nunchuck control using some library code Chris also made an ILDA player for laser show videos. So please give him some love and check out his videos on that topic. So this vector display works now by moving the laser dot around really fast. While it's good at drawing line segments, it's naturally bad in drawing images where you would light up each pixel individually. But I wanted to revive the idea of sharing a screen to the device, just like on the mechanical TV already. I just needed to take the image, perform a Sobel filter to expose the edges and converting those from pixel magnitudes to actual vector lines. Since it's transferring the vectors over web sockets and Wi-Fi, there is a delay, but I love it already. Oh, this is so cool. Although it's not as stylish as the Mini TV, the function-driven design made it also look unique. If you're inspired to get behind the math and coding here, a place to playfully learn and practice that is with today's sponsor Brilliant. Brilliant is where you learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming and AI. Their approach is building up and understanding from the ground up with tons of hands-on lessons. This kind of problem solving and playing with the concepts is proven to be six times as effective as watching lectures. Personally, I'm also a practical learner that likes to solve puzzles instead of trying to concentrate on walls of text. Even better if you can learn new concepts that way. I can recommend the courses Thinking in Code for a good programming foundation and how large language models work to get an understanding of ChatGPT, Copilot and Gemini. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash bitloony or scan the QR code on screen or you can click the link in the description. 
you will also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Don't miss out on that opportunity for you and your family. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this project. Big thanks to all my supporters and I see you next time. Bye.